In the first part of this tutorial, we learn a bit about Riso printing and we start in the sketches of a Riso calendar. In this second part, we're going to work on the final layout of the calendar, adding the illustrations, typography, and any other graphic elements needed to complete our design. We are going to create a file that's 30 by 30 cm, has a resolution of 300 dpi and basic expression of color. That's going to be a file for the wall calendar we are going to be printing. We can also create the digital one, that's going to be an horizontal A4 or 150 dpi. In order to achieve the Risto effect, we are going to use a layer for each color and choose the blending mode multiply for all of them. To create another color, for example green, usually we will just pick that color from the color settings and create a illustration with it. But to achieve the Riso effect we're going to create the illustration in both yellow and blue, and then use the blending mode multiply. We can play with the opacity of each layer or object in case we want some variations of the colors. We don't need to do our illustrations twice, we can just create it in one color, duplicate the layer and change its color at Edit, Convert to Drawing Color. If we have elements that are, let's say, pink and purple, we can create the element in pink, duplicate it, convert to Drawing Color and then erase the part of the element that's only pink. We are going to repeat this dynamic with all of our illustrations. Once we are done, we are going to slightly move two of the layers to give them an offset look that's going to help sell the Riso effect. With the illustrations finished, we are going to place the grill. We can help ourselves using the grid and snapping our stroke to it to make sure the strokes are straight. We just need to fill the grid with the typography elements, copy-paste it for all the other months and modify them for each of them. We'll make sure to align all the elements to each other and then to the grid.
We are going to be using the same typography for the name of the month, but if we want more diversity, we can change the font style or color depending on the month. We are going to place it on top of the grid and repeat it for each month. As we are done with all of the main elements, we will add some noise to obtain that reset effect we want. We are going to create a new layer over all the layers, then go to Filter, Render, Perling Noise. We will adjust the parameters so we have a small grain that's a bit blurred. We'll click OK and change the blending mode of our layer to Overlay. We can adjust the opacity until we like the way it looks and we're done. To export for a digital media, we're going to be doing it either as JPG or PNG. We'll go to File, Export, Single Layer, JPG. We'll click Save and then select the specified resolution. We're going to use at least 72 dpi, but we can go higher if we want, for example, to use it for a portfolio. Keep in mind that the file is going to wait more and for social media, 72 dpi is usually good enough. For printing, we can also use JPG. As always, if we're going to print at home, 150 dpi will be good enough. But if we're going to a professional printer, use at least 300 dpi to print your works. We'll click OK and then we are done. If we have multiple pages, we can export the file as PDF. We'll select all in page range, select split pages and crop marks, and again specify resolution of at least 300 dpi. We can name the PDF file and fill in the rest of the information. Then we are done. Clip Studio Paint.